were we before, uh, you know, the current landing pages and a long time back? Just let's take a look at some time back. How many of you all have downloaded a Netscape browser probably 10 years back? Well, that's, that's not too bad. Quite, quite a lot of old people in there then. Uh, um, we probably go to Ask Jeeves to look for certain information, or if you didn't find information on Ask Jeeves, you go to Google. And this is a Google landing page from 1998. Very interesting. Um, so we've come a long way, as you can see, from those days. And I'm going to talk about how you can really effectively build a great landing page. And Google, we like to think of it in terms of the big eight principles. It's important to take all these eight principles in perspective when you think about your landing page, and that really would help you connect your business to your user. So I'm going to take you through eight principles in eight minutes very quickly. The first one is confirmation. Does your landing page confirm what was in the ad? So users are really searching for certain information on Google, and they click on an ad because they find something interesting. What's important is to have a relevant path from your ad to your website to their final goal. And because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for some, something very specific. For example, I'm looking for an iPod, so I say buy iPod on Google. I see an ad for Apple, which tells me about their products. It takes me to their Apple store. I can choose a product uh, on the Apple store, whichever iPod I want, various colors. And I finally choose my product, and it shows me my final page where I need to pay. So you can see that there's an extremely clear path that I, that I can follow as a consumer uh, to purchase my iPod. The second one is extremely intuitive, which is speed. All of us search for products and services on the web. If we don't find something really quickly, within three to four seconds, we're probably irritated and go to another competitor's website. Research indicates that 50% of users drop off a landing page if they don't see something relevant uh, or if the page doesn't load quickly within three to four seconds. The third one is first impression, something that's extremely crucial and something that we actually see every day in life. For example, searching for a product or service the first impression makes such a big difference. Or even interviewing for a job, uh, the first five minutes uh, makes such a big difference in that candidate's sort of uh, chance for that job. Looking at uh, probably the world's worst website, you can see that the colors are all over. The contrast is really bad. Banners, text, there's no message on, on this page. So the first impression is absolutely horrendous, uh, something that you want to avoid, obviously. Example of a great first impression would be this website. So as you can see, it's probably a truck solution with some aerodynamics involved, very nice color usage as well as text. And they also have a very nice nifty calculator to calculate savings on ROI. So great first impression. Fourth one is design. And how we think of design is really trying to focus the user's attention on the offer on the page. You want to ensure that the user is not distracted from what they're looking for on your web page. So you don't want to show them other products or services or offers other than what they're looking for. Connected to design is visuals and text. So what you want to ask your web design team is whether they're using extremely high visual, high quality visuals and uh, extremely succinct text for, for whatever the landing page they're designing. Examples of good visuals and text, MailChimp, which is an email marketing solutions company, you can see that their logo is extremely pretty. Um, nice chimp there, a very sharp image. Um, text is extremely brief and concise. And they also have a very nice sort of uh, call to action button there, which is above the fold so that they don't need to scroll down to sort of take that action that you want them to take. Which brings us to the next point, which is connected to this, which is call to action. It's extremely important to have a very relevant call to action button on the page. What action do you want your users to take? And like I mentioned, it really needs to be above the fold so that as quickly as they arrive on the page, they can click on that button and take the action. Examples of good to call to action would be sign up for free, uh, free 30-day trial, um, sign up, try it for free, etc. Seventh point is about value proposition. Uh, this is kind of taking a step back and trying to tell your users why they should choose you over your competitors. Users have a lot of choice these days. Uh, they can go to your competitor's website in the click of a button. So putting a message out there, trying to explain to them why they should choose you over your, their competitor is extremely important. But this also needs to be done very briefly so that you're not going on and on about what, uh, what qualities you possess versus your competitors. And to that point, persuasion. So business is really about sales and persuading your customers to buy your product. So value, uh, so describing your value and persuading them to buy your product is really key 
kind of driving home the message. And to look at that, uh, one example would be Agoda, which is a great travel website. Uh, as you can see, their use of white space is excellent. It's, it's uncluttered, very easy to see. If I'm looking for a hotel in Kuala Lumpur, they show me uh, that they have over 160,000 hotels worldwide. They seem like a very famous website. Uh, they have some nice offers there. They're showing me an ad, uh, sorry, they're showing me an offer for a hotel in Kuala Lumpur, which actually persuades me to sort of look at it and probably take a next step in terms of an action to go and book uh, a hotel. Those were eight principles, and I'll leave you with some four, uh, four next steps that you can think about while designing your landing page. First one is to actually check your competition's page out. So the industry has a lot of in interesting data. You can learn a lot from your competition. They're looking for the same consumers and users as you are. So trying to learn from what they're doing and adopting it would be useful. Websites like 99designs.com help you sort of crowdsource designs uh, and uh, you know, choose the best design out of all the options available and, and probably design a web page. Google Website Optimizer, as previously mentioned, uh, kind of helps you test various pages. And last but not least, use precise and simple exit surveys. These really help you understand why your user is leaving your website and going to another website. But don't keep it too long. Keep it to three to four options so that he's, he's not really you know, cheesed off by your website or your landing page. That's it. Uh, thank you. And we'll be available for questions later on. Thank you.